Hey, what's up, guys? Um, we are jumping into a little bit discussing natural versus synthetic resources. Okay, um, we started the year talking about living versus non-living versus dead. Uh, we kind of used that to move into the idea that atoms make everything in our world and in our universe. Right? Um, we talked about how atoms are found in the air, they're found in our desks, they're found in the earth, they're found everywhere. Everything that's anything is built from atoms. So now we're going to start talking about, all right, well, we have all of this stuff that's found naturally on earth, <clears throat> all of these atoms, <clears throat> how do we then take those and make them into all of the things that we see in this world? So um, we're going to talk about some of the resources that we use just naturally from the earth, and then we'll talk about some of those resources that we take and we put them through processes uh, so we can make things like plastics, um, stronger steels, and stuff like that. So um, talking about natural resources, um, we say what are natural resources? Um, a natural resource is any material that is used by humans. Um, that's Natural resources include air, soil, minerals, water, oils, plants, animals. Um, these are anything from nature that we take and we use. So they provide everything needed for life, including energy, water, food, and building materials. Um, how can we categorize these? Oops, sorry. Um, there are many types. Um, some can be replaced more than others. So we have renewable and non-renewable, right? We've heard those words before. So like renewable energy is something like solar energy, right? Whereas a non-renewable energy would be something like oil. Um, because although oil does get renewed in the earth, it takes millions and millions of years, right? So um, something like, you know, using water to produce energy in the ocean, right? We're always going to have the ocean water that's going to be moving through those turbines. Whereas if we dig up coal and we use that coal, um, that's going to take millions of years to replenish itself. So renewable is stuff that's going to be able to be re replenished quickly. Um, Non-renewable is something that would um, take way beyond our lifetime to replenish. Okay, um, so that's kind of what we just talked about. Natural renewable or natural renewable resources <clears throat> can be um, replenished as quickly as they're used. Right? Some of them have inexhaustible resources, like the sun. Right? The sun's never going anywhere. Well, it will eventually, but not anytime soon. And us using solar power doesn't take energy from the sun, right? It's coming to us regardless. Um, other things like trees, right? They're going to grow, but um, they're not inexhaustible because those trees like, will, will eventually run out, right? So we need to keep um, growing trees, um, keep having them available for our use, right? So non-renewable, it forms so much slower than we can use it. So um, like oil, fossil fuels, those are from... Um, animals and plants that have died a long, 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 long time ago. Like most of our oil is from old whales, um, old marine life that died, was buried, goes through all these long geologic processes. Um, once a non-renewable resource is used up, we have to find something else to use. Okay, so let's think, how do we use all these resources? Well, material things are stuff that we use like objects, like um, we use to make objects, um, food or drink. Right, so like say you chop down a tree to build a house, that's a that's a material resource. Um, they can be either renewable or non-renewable. Um, they come from the atmosphere, the crust, the waters, living organisms. Right, so let's say you go, you hunt a deer to eat. Right, that would be a food source. That would be a material resource. Um, anything, other things like the iron that we take from the earth. Right. Um, we use iron for lots of things, but iron is something that will eventually um, be exhausted from the earth. Um, that's something that's formed through rock processes that take millions and millions of years. All right, so thinking about a house, think about all the stuff that goes into a house. Um, you know, the wood, right? All the amount of energy that goes into it, the, the metal, the steel, um, the pipes, the... The, the circuits, everything that we need to use that comes from the earth. <clears throat> All right, so now thinking about energy as well, right? So we can use wood to build a house, right? Or we could also use wood to burn and create energy, right? <clears throat> so natural resources, 
that are used to generate energy are called energy resources, right? So we have things like um, oil, we have wood we could burn, uh, we have coal power plants, we have nuclear power plants. Energy that's stored in something is called potential energy, right? So like if wood is burned, it produces energy, right? So when the wood's just sitting there, it has potential energy. Um, for this energy to be useful, we need to actually do something with it, right? Kinetic energy is the energy of movement. So when we use energy to power machines, we'll have an energy source, right? And that will cause a turbine to spin. So say we're boiling water and there's like a fan over that water, that steam will make that fan spin. And as that fan spins, um, that will turn, um, that's the turbine that will be turning and that will produce electricity, right? We have a little picture a little bit later. All right, so that's kind of what we just talked about. Take a look at this picture. So we have our energy source right here, right? Say that's just, um, let's say this is something like a renewable energy, right? Let's say this is water going through a, a dam, right? The water would run through and spin this turbine, and that causes this metal to spin with these coils. And when that metal spins within those coils, or those coils spin around the metal, um, that produces electricity. So um, if this was another thing, like say a coal power plant, we would be burning coal. That coal would boil water, and that water steam would then cause the turbine to spin, um, and then that would that would do the same thing. All right, so kind of looking at that. All right, now let's take a look. So well, we have natural resources, right? These are the things that come from the earth. Well, what about synthetic resources, right? So a natural resource is something that we just take from the earth and we use. A synthetic resource is something that we take from the earth and then we have to alter in some way. So um, the example that I'm going to use for you guys is gummy worms, right? We could use all sorts of stuff. We could say like plastics. Uh, we take natural resources, we alter them, and then we, we can use those as well. Um, but for this sake, just let's think about gummy worms, right? Gummy worms are not natural. You don't find gummy worms naturally growing in the ground or, or floating around in the ocean, right? So um, we actually get these from some natural resources. We take seaweed and we take limestone, right? So seaweed is a natural resource. Um, it's a material resource that we could use and consume. Like if you've ever had sushi, um, you can have seaweed in that. And then limestone as well, that's a, it's, it's, a, it's a rock that's mined. Um, it takes years to form, but it is a natural resource that we take. So um, when we take the seaweed, we cut it, we mix it up with water, and we make this gel. Uh, and then we dilute it, we filter it, and we evaporate it to make this powder. So we didn't really like do a whole lot to it, right? But we definitely put it through processes to change it because seaweed is not naturally found as a powder, but we turn it into a powder to make gummy worms, all right? And then the limestone, they take the limestone and then they react it with hydrochloric acid or sodium chloride, and that makes calcium chloride. So just like we were talking about taking um, sodium and chlorine and mixing them together and making something totally new, the same thing happens with limestone, right? You're not eating hydrochloric acid when you eat gummy worms, but the calcium chloride that is made from that reaction is totally a brand new product, and that is in the gummy worms, right? So um, there were molecules that were natural resources that went into that, right? So we had um, the seaweed, and then we also like from the last slide, used um, the limestone to make calcium chloride. So that's a molecule that was being used. Um, did it have a chemical reaction? Yeah, we reacted that limestone with with uh, hydrochloric acid to make calcium chloride. That is a chemical reaction. Um, were substances heated? Let's see. Um, well, if it had to be evaporated, yeah, we definitely heated that. Um, are substances put under pressure? Well, we had to turn the seaweed into a powder. So I think to grind something up, you would be doing that. Um, special machinery, probably to powderize that material or to create those chemical reactions. We probably have some materials. Um, and does it change over the years? Yeah. As we get better at making things, we change those processes, right? Especially nowadays when we try to be energy efficient, any chance we have where we could do something that requires less energy or less waste products, we're always trying to do that. Okay, so if we're looking at these, um, this is kind of just like the technical side of making the gummy worms, right? It's another long chemical reaction, but you have, by the end, these two separate things that we can compare, right? A gummy worm we could kind of compare to like, um, you know, just eating fruit, really, because they all have fruit flavors. Um, if you wanted that flavor in a natural fruit, you could just eat a strawberry instead of eating a strawberry gummy worm. So let's look at them, right? A fresh fruit slice 
is a natural uh, material resource. We would eat it, right? We would just cut that tree or the fruit, we eat it, the trees will grow back, everything's great. Whereas with the gummy worms, we have two main ingredients. One comes from seaweed, one comes from limestone. The seaweed is renewable because seaweed grows back quickly, whereas the limestone is not renewable because limestone takes millions of years in the rock cycle to form. And that's something we'll talk a little bit later about the rock cycle, but um, although it will be renewed, it's not going to be renewed for millions and millions of years. So it's not like we can just wait a couple weeks and get some more, or wait a couple years and get some more like we can with seaweed. All right, um, so some of the impacts, because when we do things, when we do these chemical processes, there are always side, side um, un, unintended consequences, you could say. So um, when we have to get the seaweed, we, we harvest this from the ocean, and that's home and food to ocean creatures, right? Um, that can displace those animals in the ecosystem. Um, processing the seaweed takes energy and produces waste, right? The calcium chloride, we have to mine it, right? So you've all seen mines. We live in Nevada where you have those big mountains that are cut up. Um, that definitely disrupts some ecosystems. Um, the process produces waste, which requires control, right? So we don't want to just have these waste products running into our rivers and our water sources. Um, Mass production takes a lot of equipment, uses a lot of energy, right? But they are good to eat, okay? So when we think about synthetic materials, like most of the world that we use is synthetic materials, right? Um, it's just a matter of as humans and as consumers making sure that uh, the synthetic materials that we are creating and that we're using don't have such negative impacts on the world that um, we're then a few years later trying to fix the problem that we just created, right? So Main ideas from this PowerPoint, we're just kind of trying to take a little intro into this idea of natural versus synthetic resources. Uh, we said natural resources are things that just come straight from the earth. Synthetic resources are things that come from the earth that we then put through different processes to change in some way. Um, as far as natural resources go, we said we have renewable and non-renewable, right? Renewable is something that um, new stuff grows or is produced about as quickly as we can use it okay so like with the seaweed example we chop up seaweed seaweed grows back really quick so that's renewable um, whereas you know something like oil that takes millions and millions of years to produce um, that is not renewable right once we run out of oil we're out of oil that's that we won't have any more of it for millions of years so um, kind of a quick little summary right there hopefully you guys got all those answers if not go back through pause the video where you need to and let's get all those answers. Have a great day.